Good afternoon, church, on this third Sunday in the month of September, uh, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. And my reflection is on complaining. And I'll be coming from the gospel reading in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, as well as Exodus chapter 16. Today's text in Matthew chapter 20 deals with laborers in a vineyard. We are all laborers working in the kingdom of heaven, also known as the kingdom of God. And this text in Matthew is one of the parables where Jesus spoke about God's kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is anyone who acknowledges God's sovereignty, who acknowledges Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who acknowledges that God reign over their lives, that God rule and reign in their hearts and rule and reign over their lives. So whatever our task is here on earth, while we are here on earth and we recognize that we acknowledge the sovereignty of God, we are in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus in his parable about the kingdom of heaven is letting us know the manner in which we shall live while we are here on earth until he comes back to judge the living and the dead. So in this text, Jesus was teaching his disciples and he used the example of laborers who work in the vineyard and were looking for hired wages. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them out. So the laborers who were hired by the landowner agreed upon their wages to work in the vineyard, and then they were sent out to do their labor. Later on, the landowner went into the marketplace and saw others standing idle, and he went and hired them to work in his vineyard. And this continued throughout the whole day. At noon, once again, the landowner saw others standing idle, and he hired them. At three o'clock, it was the same thing, and at five o'clock, it was the same, where the landowner hired others to work in his vineyard. So when it came to the evening, the landowner said to his manager to call the hired workers, for it was time to pay them their daily wages. But an issue arise. What was the issue? The ones who were hired first thought that they would have received more than those who were hired last, as it is mentioned in verse 10 of Matthew 20. So the ones who were hired first, they became disgruntled and they began to complain. When the landowner had decided to pay them their wages, he told the manager to begin with those who were hired last, then to the first. So those who were hired at five o'clock were the ones who received their wages first. In our humanity, we'll feel just as disgruntled as those workers who were hired first. They were the ones who worked from nine o'clock in the scorching heat, who indeed bore most of the burden. And we will feel just like that. We'll feel that we are being robbed. We'll feel that we're not given our due wages properly from our bosses when we see someone working less hours than we do. How often do we complain to our co-workers when we know one of our co-workers will come in during half of the day and still receive the same or equal wages as us? Many times this has happened during our places of employment. Sometimes we will even work overtime, thinking that we will receive overtime pay. And then when it comes to payday, we don't see those things reflected in our paycheck. So we can relate to these first hired workers. Nevertheless, the landowner responded, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last same as I give to you. So we may complain and be disgruntled when we think that we should receive higher wages over another. But at the end of the day, that is what we agreed on. That's what we agreed with, with our, with our place of employment. So the, our bosses will be able to justify and say to us that this is what we agreed with. The salary arrangement that we make, when we sign it, that's what we agreed with. So we should not complain. The important message that Jesus wanted for us to receive in this parable was that the last will be first and the first will be last. When we look at this parable in this text, we can say that life is not fair. Life is definitely not fair and it's just not right for it to be so. However, brothers and sisters in Christ, that is how life is. 
We see throughout our journey in life that many people who think that they're way ahead of us, they're actually behind, or we are just at the same level. They may do things to get themselves ahead, but at the end of the day, they are just at the same level as us or even going nowhere. Moreover, it may take them to forget to do something. They may do uh, something, an error, make a mistake, and they will end up being left behind. Do you remember the story in the book of the Gospel of Matthew about the ten bridesmaids? There were ten bridesmaids in the Gospel of Matthew. And this is another example of Jesus teaching his disciples about the kingdom of heaven. And in this parable, five of the bridesmaids were foolish and the other five were wise. They all had their lamps with them, waiting for the bridegroom. But the five who were foolish took no oil with them. They took no extra oil with them. The five who were wise had their flax of oil with them. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept, waiting for the bridegroom. When it was announced that it was time to meet the bridegroom, their lamps were going out. So the five foolish bridesmaids who didn't have any oil with them in the beginning went to the five wise bridesmaids, demanding them to give them their flax of oil. And the five bridesmaids who were wise refused to do so and told them to go into the marketplace to get their oil. When they went into the marketplace, the bridegroom arrived. So those who were ready, the five bridesmaids who were wise, were ready to meet the bridegroom and they were able to enter into the wedding banquet. But once the other five foolish bridesmaids came, the doors were shut. It was already late for them to enter into the wedding banquet. So we are working in the kingdom of heaven or in the kingdom of God. And then there will be times where we'll be left out if we are not careful or if we are not wise. If we make one mistake, that mistake can easily set us all the way back from what we have already accomplished. Another example that deals with complaining is in Exodus chapter 16 from verses 2 to 15. Throughout the Old Testament, the Israelites were famous for complaining. In the book of Exodus, we learn that they complained to Moses after being delivered out of bondage from Egypt. They wished they were back in slavery when they saw Pharaoh and his army pursuing them while they camped by the Red Sea. God saved them miraculously by parting the Red Sea for them to cross. And even through that experience, they saw that God was their salvation and they feared God. But while they're traveling through the wilderness, they became hungry. They were hungry for food. The food the Israelites had with them when they left Egypt had run out. So they did not have any meal to prepare. When we are hungry, or worse, behavior such as being angry comes out until we feed that hunger. This is what was going on with the Israelites, the people of Israel in Egypt. And they were angry with Moses, the servant who God sent them to deliver them. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, we learned while Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. He was angry to the point of death, and the devil used his hunger to tempt Jesus. However, Jesus was able to feed that hunger with the word of God and by the word of God. He was able to resist the temptations and rebuke Satan. During the time of Moses, Jesus was not yet manifested in the flesh. However, the Israelites knew God. They knew God as their Yahweh. They knew God as their Jehovah Jireh. They knew the great I am and what God was able to do. Although God saved and delivered them, they were hungry and they complained and bickered to Moses. They said, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. That is what hunger will do to us. It will make us not think straight. 
It would make us not have any kind of sense because here now the Israelites were hungry. They were, they were having hunger pants and they got anger with Moses and they wish now that they were back in Egypt saying that if only now we could go back to Egypt and eat the flesh pots. Uh, 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 then they were wishing that they were back under the oppression by those who brutalized them, the Egyptians. They wish they were under oppression rather than having the freedom that, G that God had set them free from. So God heard their bickering and told Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions. Here is another example of God hearing the Israelites cries. God heard the Israelites. He heard their bickering. He knew that they were hungry and God provided for them by sending bread from heaven, which was the manna. And God provided for them meat in the evening. Moses told them in verse 8, When the Lord gives you the meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against them, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. In life, church, we complain about every little thing, every single matter, whether they're big or small. We complain just like the people of Israel. But God will provide. God is our provider. God provided for the Israelites manna, the bread from heaven, to fill them up in the morning. And God sent them quail at twilight for their meal in the evening, for them to know that he is Lord and that he is their God. When the Israelites saw the bread that, when the Israelites saw the bread, they said to one another, what is it? Because they did not know what it was. So church, God will give us the very essential things we need in life in order to survive. In addition, when God sent them to us, we do not even recognize that he was already answered our prayers. So why complain? Glory to God. In these two stories shows us that God still cares for us. God still provides for us even when we're being selfish. God still provides. God still cares for us even when we're angry. God still provides. God still cares for us when we're envious or jealous of one another. God still provides. God still cares for us even when we don't see the good in other people. God still provides. In the example with the land owner in the vineyard he was doing good he was bringing and hiring all those workers and back then they were unemployed just as how some of us are unemployed during this pandemic but he was doing good he saw them being have he saw a need in the community and he went out there and hired all those people standing idling by and that's what we need to do to do good for those who are standing idling by who need uh, assistance who need a place of employment who need help during this time while we're in this pandemic the landowner recognized the need in the community but those first hired workers were ungrateful. They complained. They did not see the good that he was doing. Their concern was that they should have received more wages than those that came in last. In the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, we need to seek well to do to others, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. This is what Jesus is teaching us to do. But thanks be to God for his grace and mercy, that even when we fall short of the glory of God, God still blesses us and send us manna from heaven. We have an awesome God who is rich in heavenly places. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, if you then who are evil, if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. Hallelujah. We are hungry right now. We are hungry and we are starving for a better world. We are worried about the state of the nation. We are, we are worried what's going to happen in the next 46 days. We are worried that things does not look good right now. People are 
hungry and you're starving for a better world. We're hungry and we're starving to get out of this pandemic. We are hungry and we're starving for peace. We're hungry and starving for healing. And we want God to open the windows of heaven to pour down the manna, to pour down blessings upon us, to feed us, feed us from, the, from this hunger and starvation that we're having crying out in this nation and in this world. It has not yet happened, but our hope should still be in God, who is our sovereign Lord and King. God is still in control. So while we hunger and while we starve and while we complain about things in life, fill our bodies with our spiritual food of Jesus Christ. Fill our bodies with the word of God. Fill our bodies by praying day and night. Fill up ourselves worshiping the Lord God Almighty. Fill ourselves give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. And when we're filled with the love of Jesus Christ, when we're filled with the love of God, it will help us to not complain. It will help us to not bicker. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I pray that God will, will answer your prayers that are in your heart, those silent prayers that are in your heart. That I pray that we seek God and ask him to help us to not complain and to not bicker. I pray that God will grant us the peace that passes all understanding. I pray that God will continue to be our light during this difficult time in this dark world. And I pray that the spirit of Christ will fill us up till we overflow. In Jesus' name we pray. Have a blessed Sunday and have a blessed week. Be safe. To God be the glory for the great things he has done.